All right. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. I see we have a couple people on here. All right. Good morning, oh, sorry. everyone. Get that taken care of. See, we have Michelle and Jennifer on here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Um, feel free to post in the chat if you have any questions or um, feel free to interact. We'd love to have your comments. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we are using Restream, so if there's any permissions needed, please grant those. Otherwise, we'll just see um, Facebook user or something to that effect and may not see your name. So make sure to do that. A couple couple things. Um, one, this episode is brought to you by Kenny Ingersoll TV. Um, glad to have them as a sponsor. And also announcement as many of you may have heard we are doing a book collaboration project called 100 ways to eat a sandwich and if you are interested to learn more about being part of that collaboration project <clears throat> please go to ingersollenterprises.weebly.com forward slash books you see here um we are currently in the process of books one and two of uh, five parts so if you want to get on any or multiple of those please go check out the website and get into contact with us love to have you on <clears throat> excuse me oh i'm excited for the guests today not only because i have to be but i i get to be because they're an awesome person um and they'll be on in just a, a couple moments so We'll just uh, chat for a minute and <clears throat> hang out for a minute until they get on. In the meantime, I'd love for you to post what you have been doing this week. What have you accomplished this week that you're most proud of? You know, um, business related personal life, church, whatever it is, that's something you're you're proud that you accomplished, got it off, got it completed, got it done. I'd love to see that. I'd love to um, support you in that. <clears throat> you know, share each other's wins, so to speak, if you will. Um, one of the one thing for me has been being a lot better at writing my goals and affirmations morning and night. You know, I'm I'm decently good at it, but sometimes I'll skip a day or skip the morning or skip the evening. And so I I've been doing a lot better to try and get get that done morning and night Jennifer says editing text on a children's book and storyboarding done finishing the layout awesome Jennifer I've been kind of hearing the progress on your book that is awesome can't wait to see it when it's done um I, I love I love seeing progress like that you know and it's inspiring you know it inspires me because I'm writing books myself, and there's often times that will be like, ugh, this is taking forever. I don't know what to do. I'm going to blah. I'm drawing a blank. All those sort of things. And then when you read something like what Jennifer just posted, you're like, all right, we got this. We got this. We can handle this. You know? <clears throat> so thank you for sharing that. And I appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ugh. And a little overcast today, and it's not sure if it's going to rain or snow or sunshine or all three at the same time. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, 
And this is something else I'm working on is being okay with silence. You know, in, in the finance industry that I, I'm in, when I'm talking to my clients, it's hard to get over the awkward silence sometimes. You, you think you always have to be saying something or there always has to be conversation going. And it's, it's hard to break that habit. You know, just letting there be silence, you know, and um, <clears throat> just being being okay with that. <laughs> Sometimes it's very hard to do. It's, it's awkward, especially when you're on a situation like this. You think you always have to be saying something. But <clears throat> oh, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> Just reading that again and finishing the layout. So, so Jennifer, when are you expecting it to be in print? I'm sure you've mentioned it before, but. Do you know when, do you know the kind of the time frame you'll expect that to be in print or available for um, electronic or print? All right, so our guest is here. I'm going to do a quick introduction. I love this woman. You know, um, it's my mom, wonderful woman, and I have to be nice, otherwise I'll be grounded. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, she has been my rock. She, you know, um, my, my rock, my foundation, where a lot of... A lot of my life lessons are, and struggles have been <clears throat> made clearer and more able for me to understand because of her. You know, I'm able to pick her brain and um, things I don't understand. I've been able to utilize and learn from her knowledge and experience. So let's bring her on. Terry, hi, Mom. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Thanks for jumping on. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for jumping on to Thanks Passion for the Purpose of <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> just gave a little introduction, but a little quick backstory. Um, was it about just over a year ago? is when you um, transition more fully into your wheelchair, correct? I got my wheelchair a year ago, January. Okay, so yeah, a little over a year ago. And our, our focus for this episode is adjusting to and learning to and knowing that it's still um, completely possible to pursue your passions and purposes, even from a wheelchair. So I kind of want to talk about your adjustment story and how you've learned to overcome that and you know how you still live your passion follow fulfill your purpose from a wheelchair okay <laughs> it's it's been tough it's been tough um you know my my family and some friends have been very good supports but you know, we have a ramp. I can get around. I can drive. I can, you know, just do a lot of things. It's been tough. The only thing I really don't miss is weeding. Oh, so. no weeding. <laughs> <laughs> so what have been some of the, the hardest kind of moments, if you will, um, going into only as much detail as you want, 
but also the best moments from the this. hardest and the best. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Well, one of whether I'm in a wheelchair or not, the support and love of my family has been the great thing that's carried me through my whole life. So I've loved that. Um, in a wheelchair, yeah, some things I can't do, but I find people are very willing to help. Uh, there are a lot of things I can do. Um, and so I still try to do those. Awesome. So yeah, I every day it's it's more and more my phone doesn't want to stay where I tell it to. Anyway, <laughs> every day it's more and more of okay, I got this right, I got this right, I got this right. Uh better fix that. Um how can I change that? Blah blah blah. So it's 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 a learning process every day. Oh, absolutely. And and then we wouldn't expect anything less than than it to be a learning process. Oh, I think one of the, the biggest things that I've I've seen in growth in you, and I've been experiencing this, I just recently had some surgery, is allowing others to step in and help. Yeah, that's that's tough. All my life I've been the doer. I've done everything. You know, I got on my roof, I drove forklifts, I drove motorhomes, I I did everything. And now it's it's limiting and um and it's nice to watch how people are learning and and how to help me how i need to be helped so i love that and and you learn really quickly how appreciative you become when Others have to step in and do all the stuff that you used to do. Like with the surgery, um, I can't lift more than 15 pounds right now. Right. And, and it is like torture for me, you know? And so I have to, I have to ask people all the time, can you, can you put this in here? I can't even lift a tool bag right now, you know? So I'm, I'm reliant on people, but I'm so grateful that others are willing to to step in and, and serve and help me. And I'm more gratitude. And it opens my eyes to everything that everyone else does, even before my surgery, that I didn't even realize or appreciate like I should have. Right. And, it, and then, too, it helps you see and helps them see that they're growing in their own abilities. Um, it's... It's fun to watch my grandkids, for example. Oh, um, I can do that, I think. And then they do it and they, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I can do that. And just watch them grow, watch them gain their confidence and their abilities. And it's just fun to watch them progress. Yep. And, and we've had many discussions off camera of focusing, um, as you mentioned earlier, on the things you can do um how how has that helped a lot and you know how do you how would you help others to focus on that versus oh i can't do this anymore or now i'm stuck in this chair or whatever um one of the things well i've always liked to do handwork and so i've had i've got many projects going that i'm making for grandkids and kids and so i like doing that but another thing i like to do is while I'm doing those things is be on the phone and just connect with people. And um, recently there was a lady in my neighborhood that had surgery on her one hand. Well, she found out really quickly that for a few weeks she wasn't going to be able to do much with just the one hand that she had available. And so I helped arrange friends to go in and help her and do the things that she couldn't do for those few weeks until she got the restoration of her hand after surgery. So I was able to help coordinate that. If I could walk, I'd go over and help do it, but I can't do that, but I can help coordinate it and encourage her and just those kind of things. And I like that too. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's helped so many people around to realize, Oh, if, 
if they can do it like that and just shift there and I can certainly do it like this and do these shifts here like you said you can't physically walk there but you can you can coordinate and you can give people rides you know um so often when we think of like helping others or service we think it's got to be something really big yeah when, and the, to the total fig yeah but when in reality a huge act of service is a phone call or giving someone a ride or or whatever so we have a situation a friend of mine in the area is aware of a refugee family and um i know a little bit of that language and so i've been able to go over to her school and pick her up and take her home the 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 school child you know from that refugee family and it's not a big thing but it is a big thing otherwise she'd be in a strange country totally lost and didn't know where to do and blah 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 and so i can help bridge that little bit of a gap and and it makes me feel good yeah and and who knows you'll you'll probably be in one of her stories that she tells her kids and 15, 20 years or whatever. Yeah, this little old lady in a wheelchair came and gave me a ride home and I didn't know anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, um, let's talk about how, how having a good attitude and a sense of humor has helped. Um, and it does help. It does help. One of the... the a couple of things. One, my friend, her her go-to word is, that's how you roll. Uh, one day we were talking and she looked at me and she said, oh, yeah, that's really how you roll. <laughs> so that's been my mantra. But another fun thing that we've done is put motorcycle lights, LED lights on my, mo uh, my wheelchair and it syncs to my playlist and it's just fun to just show strange kids or my grandkids or a different activities just to turn on those lights and, and entertains them for a little while. And it's just, it's just something I can do that makes everybody a little bit more comfortable and a little bit happy and just fun. So. Yeah. I remember last year we were at Flaming Gorge and um, one of the little grocery stores in their town. There were some kids and the parents were in the checkout and they were kids were getting rowdy and stuff. And so you turned on your lights and it distracted the kids and they were a little yep. dancing and stuff. And the parents were able to get their groceries and whatnot. And yep. it was it was an awesome way to utilize um, your situation, you know, a positive aspect of what you've got. Yep. So and I like that sort of thing. I like to be able to to do what I can and make the best of my situation. That's so, how I roll. That's how you roll. <laughs> and, and so often we, we get caught up in the, I can't anymore. And we don't realize, you know, how much of a positive impact we're truly having on others. You know, I know for you personally, because you're my mom, you've been an inspiration for several articles I've written and in a couple of my books. So that story is living on, on, you know, but <clears throat> sometimes we don't realize where that story is going to go. Yeah. And, and, and I've looked for magic wands everywhere and I can't do anything to get my legs back. So I need to make the best I, that I can out of this. And, and it just helps to have the support of good people and, and, make it a journey a good positive journey oh and there's so many things we could tie this to uh you know uh set back on your goals you know not reaching them when you thought you did or how you did or flat tire or, and things like that and you know if you if you have the support system in place and the people you can call when you need them you know, then you, you can just keep moving on no matter, no matter what happens. Um, yeah. Um, 
And what really matters to me, what really matters <clears throat> is being with my family and inter interacting with my family and friends. And I can still do that. So it's changed how I do that, but I can still do that. And that's important to me. So. Absolutely. You know, and, and it makes us all stronger because of the, the challenges that come with it, you know, regardless of the situation, you know, with, with you in your wheelchair or me and my surgery or somebody's got a broken down car, you know, they, they were planning on plan A to get there, if you will. But, uh -huh. you know, the goal is still um, there. They still go after the goal, the, the route and the how is what changes you know as long as if um as long as you don't stop you're not gonna fail yeah so you just have to do things in a different way and uh, i've noticed that when i'm at activities or whatever people don't want to race me they know i'm gonna win so <laughs> got that one covered <laughs> that's right <laughs> so Yep, and, and I can attest to that too. We go walking down the street and <laughs> But um what would you say to or what would you wish you would have known a year ago, January, that you know now? Or what would you say to someone having a challenge, you know, if, if if Terry was getting into the wheelchair a year ago and you were uh, I can't hear you. Well, seems we're having a few technical issues, but we'll see if we can get this figured out. Just like we were talking, you just roll with it and Just hang with us. We'll see if we can get this figured out here. Did I lose you? Oh, now we can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know what happened. So, oh, stupid technology. <laughs> Well, you know, but, when it works, it's great. Yeah. So, um, we missed what you said a few minutes ago, but we're just okay. basically saying you still roll with it. And I just, I just had to tell myself there are still a lot of things I can do. The ways I do it have changed. Just look for it. And when, you know, and then when you do have your pity parties, have your pity party and just be done with it. And, Get on to the good stuff again. Awesome. I love that. Because everyone, everyone has their downs and stuff and, you know, have a, have a quick pity party or whatever. And then. Yeah. There's a back on. Grr, but you got to go through the grr to get to the great. And I love it. I got to remember that. So, a lot of great. A lot of, a lot of greats. And 
and that emphasizes the importance of having that support group because sometimes we'll we'll block that great stuff out of our mind and we'll only be focused on the the crap that we're in at the moment and our pity party but we need those others around us to pull us out and get us back on the right track well and then too i'm a support group too we're uh, it's not one-sided and i've I figured that out. It's not one sided. It's not just you giving me all the support. I'm giving you support, and so's Fred, and so's Joe, and so's Andrea. You know, every, we have different ways of supporting each other, and just keep it up. Absolutely, it's a it's a two way street. Oh, not even a not even a street because it goes all different directions. <laughs> yeah, we all have something to contribute. I like that. And that, that is vital right there. We all have a message. We all have something we can do. We all have something we can contribute. You know, even in our own little ways at times, or uh, however insignificant it may seem sometimes. It's vital. And you don't want to eat pizza for every meal. You like a variety, so you don't want to have just one person who's your support group. You, you need a variety. Yep. Because like so, it goes both ways. We support each other. Absolutely. Awesome. I love it. And I know that you've been a, a major support for me. And I've I've grown a lot, you know, and not just with this, but all my life, obviously. So well, thank I appreciate you. you sharing that. And thank you for being here. Well, thank you. Well, just have a good day. Oh, absolutely. Have a great day. And everyone for tuning in, thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the show live or replay. And remember to live your passion, fulfill your purpose, and explore those possibilities.